Hey everybody, it's Mike Frieder here with On Call Compliance Solutions, and I'm back with another Compliance Tip of the Week. This week we're talking about DFARS, NIST, SP800-171, and CMMC updates for contractors. What you need to know to stay compliant. And you're going to want to stay tuned to the end of this video because uh, there's plenty of opportunities here to comment. And if this video gets five comments, I will wear an astronaut mask in the next video. So comment below if you want to see me wear an astronaut mask. I know you're watching. Okay, so, hey, if you're a defense contractor who's feeling overwhelmed, tired, and alone, trying to understand all of this DFARS, NIST SP-800-171, and CMMC compliance stuff on top of an already colossal workload, if you feel like you're drowning in the hundreds of pages of confusing legalese and hard-to-understand techno mumbo-jumbo, or even if you just need help connecting the dots for the leaders in your company between getting compliant and how it can lead to growth and higher profits, well, I've got great news for you, my friend. You found your home here at On-Call Compliance Solutions, where we can help you transform into your company's on-call compliance hero. Okay, so you created your system security plan, you created your plan of actual milestones, you got your medium assurance security certificate, and you're all set with a perfect 110 SPRS score. Now what? So there's a lot of the compliance controls which require ongoing activities, all right? Compliance with DFARS 252.204-7012 and NIST SP-100171 are not one and done activities and you're good to go. It doesn't work like that, right? Compliance is an ongoing effort. In fact, many of the controls, if not almost all of the controls, require ongoing activities such as monitoring and physical security controls, ongoing training, ongoing risk management activities, and more in order to continue being compliant. What's more is you are going to need to be prepared to prove to an assessor that you are actually walking the walk here, not just talking the talk. So of course, the big question is, how do I stay compliant once I'm here? Well, great question. So in this video, I'm not going to lay out every single activity necessary as that list could be really, really long depending upon the size of your company. And for sure, it's different for everyone. But what I do think is useful is to share basic understanding of a framework we've built here at OnCall to help maintain compliance for our clients, okay? So the first thing I'll tell you before the first thing I'll tell you is we're trying to see how many people actually watch the videos and if we can get some cool comments. So comment below about what it takes to get cool comments. Let us know because we want to really build engagement on this channel. We're committed to it, right? Hundreds of videos in, baby, we're committed. And if I get five comments on this video, I will do the next video as soon as we hit five comments in an astronaut mask. Kind of a real one. Anyway, all right. So the first thing I'll tell you is that we actually have a service we call our Virtual Compliance Officer Service. It's highly unique. It's the only one in the existence of the entire planetary universe. We built it just for defense contractors like you. And to our knowledge, it's the only fractional compliance officer program of its kind that specifically caters to DFARS, NIST, and CMMC. Doesn't exist anywhere else. One of one, baby. All right, if you'd like to learn more about it, check out the links in the description below for easy ways to reach out to us if you're looking to automate staying compliant in your company. You know, so you can focus on your day job. All right, so what does staying compliant look like? Well, here's a basic list of items required to have a solid DFARS compliance program in place at your office. This is a basic idea of what our virtual compliance officers are doing for our clients, and it should give you an idea of what you will need to do for your company, right? So kind of a basic framework. So here's what we recommend. Number one, risk management meetings, okay? It could be annual, it could be biannual, it could be quarterly. It, it all depends on the size of your company, how many offices you have, what the complexity is. It might even be monthly. But one way or another, you need to be having routine scheduled risk management meetings. And even better, if it's documented what you're doing in those meetings, maybe you've got some time entries, whatever it is, but something to prove that you're actually actively managing risk. So we use risk management meetings for that. Uh, we talk about the idea of keeping your system security plan and plan of actual milestones and the SPRS score itself up to date. You got to do that stuff, right? It's not enough to just build it once and let it go for five years. You actually have to keep this stuff up to date. Very important if you're assessed. Then you've got to actually keep all of that required baseline documentation, you know, your network configurations, network maps, inventories of systems, software, firmware, hardware, all that stuff. That's got to be kept up to date. And you got to do it at least annually, right? So uh, again, that's got to be kept up to date. That's another thing that you've got to do. Uh, you've also got security policies, personnel policies, standard operating procedures, 
ultimately you're going to need some policies to solve for the things that you can't technically solve for uh, and enforce training. So your policies, you need to have those on hand. They need to be up to date. All right. If it's a 10 year old policy, you know, update it, go through it, have lawyers look over it, whatever makes the most sense, but you're going to have to have that done. Also training, you're going to need to be able to demonstrate to an assessor that training was actually done, when it was done, who got trained, who didn't get trained, when they got trained. Uh, and you know, that's something that uh, our, our virtual compliance officers are working every day with our clients on. Training is huge. It's very complex to really coordinate, especially if you've got a larger company. Uh, and again, it's, it's a big piece of what we do uh, in our virtual compliance management program. So again, training is key. You got to make sure your people know what this stuff is. They go through the DOD's mandatory CUI training. They go through the insider threat training. They get maybe some kind of cybersecurity phishing training. All of those things have to be done on an ongoing basis, usually annually. You know, we produce a whole lot of other documents for our clients. Things like, you know, CUI media, uh, you know, uh, tracking logs, right? So the ability to tell where CUI is, chain of custody, all that kind of stuff. So having your standard operating procedures and all of your stuff available in a library uh, that can quickly be called upon, uh, I think is also very important. Now you're also gonna have to support your sales teams, okay? So somehow you're gonna need expert assistance when it comes to supporting your sales teams with compliance challenges they have, filling out all these compliance questionnaires that got you in this hot water in the first place. And of course, closing deal with compliance is a competitive selling proposition. You know, we do that really, really well. Hopefully, if you're, if you're getting compliant, you're going the extra mile here on that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you're going to need to be able to support your salespeople with compliance help and compliance questions. Now, your operations team, not to be left out, they're going to need to be reviewed as well because, uh, of course, as you're going along doing your day-to-day -day operations, any changes that get made also have to have this DFARS and NIST compliance in mind. All right. Uh, again, it's so easy to just start letting people into your shipping dock or uh, you know, letting people into parts of your building without thinking about the idea that, wait a minute, you've got DOD level compliance here you've got to commit to. So your operations team needs support too with this. Now, someone's also gonna have to do some cyber incident reporting, right? So we need to know who that person is in the organization. They need to have practiced putting in the certificate, actually logging on to you know, DibNet and actually practicing. Uh, you, know, you don't have to actually submit a real report, but at least go through the forms once. If you bought the certificate, go through the forms. Know what it's like. So when your pants are on fire because you're having an emergency cyber incident, you'll actually know what looks like what. And so you don't get scammed. That's another issue. All right. Uh, then there's IT solutions review. So again, whoever's managing this stuff internally, they're going to need to review each and every IT solution that's getting put into place here because you need expert assistance to make sure that the IT solution being put in place is actually DFARS compliant. It's a huge problem. You can't just go out there and use Dropbox commercial. It doesn't work like that. There are requirements for DFARS. I won't go into them here, but the idea is somebody needs to be interfacing with the IT team. Now, uh, obviously there's the big one, right? The actual, oh no, I'm getting audited or I'm gonna go through a CMMC assessment or a CMMC certification. So you're gonna to have to have resources dedicated to being able to do that. So again, you're gonna need support for the actual auditing and review and evidence gathering that you'll need when you actually get audited. Of course, it helps to have all of this stuff organized in a really nice online platform. It's something we do for our clients. We actually have a proprietary uh, on-call compliance manager application that we built. Uh, and it's pretty cool. We actually helped our clients out by building something that will manage multiple different kinds of compliances for them in one simple interface. It's really cool. Only on-call has it. And again, one way or another, I don't think you need it on day one when you, when you get compliant, but I think you do need it from an ongoing perspective to be able to have an easy place that you can share information with whoever may be concerned with compliance. So again, major issue there. So we do recommend an online platform. We just don't recommend it out of the gate. Uh, but again, once you've gotten compliant, you got your stuff together, certainly keeping track of this stuff online versus Word documents is probably a lot easier. Again, kind of a little bonus ad there. And then of course, uh, you know, you're gonna want your entire compliance support history. Now we do time and ticket entries. So that's kind of how we do it. Everything that happens is logged in a ticket. It's got all the information about what happened, who worked on it, when they worked on it. There's an audit trail. Again, if you don't have something like that, it's okay. You can call us for help. Uh, but ultimately at the end of the day, you should have the ability to demonstrate to an assessor all of the efforts that you're putting forth to get compliant. That's gonna definitely get you out of hot water, give a clear demonstration you're not negligent, and again, make the whole audit process a lot easier on you, trust me. When they see you're trying, things get a little bit easier. As you can see, there's a lot involved in staying compliant. And of course, based on the size of your company and what you have going on, each of these items could take some time, all right? Or extensive work, 
and in some cases they're fairly easy. Either way, hopefully this at least gives you a clue about what an acceptable compliance program looks like and gives you a little direction if you're trying to do this yourself. Or uh, you could just hit the easy button and call us, right? Because at On Call, we take defense contractors who have had this DFARS, NIST, CMMC, ITAR, and EAR information security compliance stuff just dropped in their laps like a seagull on a sunny day. And we teach you how to level up and be a proper on-call compliance hero for your company, eliminating gaps, gray areas, and getting this solved, all while showing you how to leverage compliance as your secret weapon to land more uh, defense work with higher profit margins. Now, that's what becoming an on-call compliance hero can do for you. And if you're looking for more help getting compliant, heck, maybe you just want this stuff to go away and you're like, Mike, can you just do it for us? Well, it turns out we can. We have virtual compliance officers on the ready for you. Our compliance experts are always on call for you. You can visit cmmccompliancesecrets.com or check out the bio below for links to get help right now. There you can find more information about how we can help, self-schedule time at your convenience with one of our compliance experts through any form on the website, and of course, learn more about our completely done for you services that can have you on your way to being compliant in just two to three days. Now, if you love the content we're putting out here for you, I think I said this earlier, if we can get five comments on this video, I will wear an astronaut helmet to our next video. So comment below. I don't even care what you comment as long as it's nice. Don't be mean. I don't like mean stuff. I'm a pretty nice guy. I try to do stuff for free anyway. So eh, let's just not have any negativity. Let's go all positive, right? Comment below. Tell me what your favorite color is. I don't care what it is. Five comments below. I'm wearing an astronaut helmet as soon as I see it. Help us out with a big thumbs up on that like button, or even better, smash the subscribe button. Make my day. Hey, you know what? If I get 10 new subscribers off this video, I don't really know what I'll do, but, but you know what? It's a secret. I'll do a secret thing, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's going to be cool. It's going to be almost as cool as an astronaut helmet, but not quite as cool as a can of spam. Until the next compliance tip, my friends, stay safe and secure out there. Hit us in the comments below, and let us know what you'd like to know more about when it comes to information security and compliance. I'll see you on the next one, hopefully not in an astronaut helmet.